Hello everybody, welcome to Acero Psych. Today we are going to be going over the INFJ, also known as the Sage. As many of you might know, the INFJ is considered the rarest personality of all the 16 types, and thus is often quite the topic for discussion. In this video we're going to give an overview of the INFJ, discuss their cognitive functions and how they work, explore some behavioral patterns typical in the INFJ, and then finish with some of my opinions on the type as an MBTI practitioner and enthusiast. Let's get into it. It is important to note before we go on that while I call the INFJ the sage, not every single INFJ is going to fall within such a stereotype. Every person of each type has individual traits that are essential and not everyone will fall within the boundaries of a given title. Wise, gentle, caring, stoic, and patient. These are words that can be commonly used to describe the average INFJ. INFJs are highly perceptive individuals that also tend to be highly introverted. Despite being a feeling type, they tend to show significantly less emotional affect and typically prefer to keep a collected and measured form compared to a lot of the other feeling types. This isn't to say that the INFJ does not feel as much. They are simply much more guided by their intuition than their feelings as a dominant perceiving type, which we will discuss in the cognitive function section. That said, their intuition is often directed towards goals relating to other people, such as the overall well-being of those important to them, people's potential as individuals, and the state of the INFJ's interpersonal relationships. Due to these reasons, it is quite common for INFJs to end up in positions in their professional or personal lives where they can influence other people's lives in a way that they perceive as good. Examples of this would include therapists, counselors, human resources positions, social workers, and social movement leaders or ethicists. The INFJ personality type leads with dominant introverted intuition. They have secondary extroverted feeling, tertiary introverted thinking, and repressed extroverted sensing. It is important to note that despite being a judging type, the INFJ leads with their introverted function because they are an introverted type. This actually makes the INFJ a dominant perceiving type that prefers to judge and shape their external world second to their dominant introverted perceptions. First is introverted intuition or NI, the INFJ's dominant function. Introverted intuition is the cognitive function with the most mystery surrounding it in the MBTI community. The reason for this is that in terms of rarity, it is the rarest to have higher in the function stack, and thus far less people tend to experience it directly. As an MBTI practitioner, I have spent a lot of time contemplating NI, and this is the current definition I use for dominant introverted intuition. Introverted intuition experiences the world through subjective image projections of one's interpretations of a sensation or perception, not through the sensation itself. The direct sensations and physical implications of an event are ignored in favor of the subjective relevance projected through hypothetical mental imagery. The meanings, causes, and effects of these subjective interpretations are broken down into abstractions, subconsciously stored, and act as categorical representatives to newly experienced stimuli, which I call personal archetypes. Upon experiencing new stimulus, introverted intuition processes sensory information through the lens of the stored abstract categorical representatives. This allows the intuitive to come to quick and anticipatory conclusions. NI sees the archetypal and abstract structural materials of a given situation or scenario, then uses those recognitions to formulate a complete mental image which is experienced instead of the stimulus itself. I know that was a lot to take in, so let me try to simplify it. A very simple way to think of this is as meta-perceptions the awareness of one's own sensations and perceptions. This essentially means that the NI dominant tends to be detached from the immediate moment and instead experiences a personal interpretation of it. This is the constant and ongoing mental process of NI dominance, and this is the reason why it is common for the INJ types to appear aloof and detached. As an introverted perceiving function, NI is highly subjective and thus is very difficult to translate to the outer world. Here is a quote from Carl Jung that resonated strongly with my view on introverted intuition. My speech isn't perfect, not because I want to shine with words, but out of the impossibility of finding those words. I speak in images, with nothing else can I express the words from the depth. The NI dominant, despite stereotypes, is not a psychic, they don't have future telling capabilities, and they aren't some entirely different being. They do see the world in a way that is not typical though, and that unique perspective, that connection to the abstract and the archetypal, makes them seem eccentric to the outside viewer. So what does all of that mean for the INFJ? Well, that is where the auxiliary function comes into play. Extroverted feeling acts as both a directional guide and a mechanic of expression for the INFJ's NI. Extroverted feeling is known as the harmony function because above all things, its goal is to create and maintain emotional harmony within the FE user and those close to them. FE types tend to place so much value in this harmony that they are much more willing to come to a middle ground or give way on matters of emotional importance compared to FI types. 
A wonderful example of this comes from Gifts Differing, in which Briggs describes a scenario where an extroverted feeling type was asked their opinion on typology. The person said, So-and-so asked me what I thought of type. I didn't know how to respond because I didn't know how they felt about it. The extroverted feeling types tend to align their morals, interests, and values alongside those that are important to them as they develop their interpersonal relationships. Take, for example, an extroverted feeling type is close friends with an introverted feeling dominant type, and that individual dislikes a certain genre of music. It is far more likely that the FE type would grow to dislike that music than it would be for the FI type to give up their dislike. Piecing this together with the dominant NI of the INFJ means that the abstract categorical perceptions tend to be derived from and focused on interactions that relate to creating and maintaining the INFJ's emotional harmony. The INFJ will spend a lot of their life pondering their interpretations of events that have emotional impact. Because of the typical forward thinking of the NI type, it is quite common for the INFJ to begin to develop long-term plans for how issues of emotional value can be solved. This is why they tend to excel in counseling and therapy fields. Before we continue on to introverted thinking, let me just interrupt and say that if you are enjoying this video and you would like to support me further so I can create more content like this, please consider looking at the links in the description box below. I would greatly appreciate it. Back to the learning. The tertiary function of the INFJ, introverted thinking, tends to play a minor role in the presentation of personality as most tertiary functions do. TI is not antagonistic to NI, but it is also not as supportive as extroverted feeling. Introverted thinking as a whole is a judging process that internalizes logic and information and synthesizes it in a very systematic way. Unlike TE, it has very little interest in the outer improvement of things, such as efficiency and productivity. TI tends to focus more on deductive-like approaches to problem solving, where strict logic and step-by-step -step methods are used. This leads the INFJ to have a preference for this type of problem solving when it comes to issues not involving people or values. That said, being as this is not a primary way of engaging with the world, this skill is usually one that is built up with age and maturity within the INFJ. On to repressed extroverted sensing. As mentioned earlier, NI has a very in-depth and distinct way of engaging with the world that does not involve direct sensations. Because of this, the INFJ is usually detached from the present moment and will oftentimes struggle in environments that are filled with new stimuli. When NI is overloaded with new sensations to process, it becomes unable to effectively filter all of the information that needs to be filtered. This typically leads to high levels of stress or anxiety within the INFJ. Another common issue would be when the INFJ falls into the extroverted sensing grip, which essentially means that they enter a state where introverted intuition is temporarily repressed. In times like this, it is common for INFJs to over or underindulge themselves in sensory pleasures such as eating. They are likely to isolate themselves to an even higher extent than usual. They might put themselves into a high sensory situation thinking it might be a good idea in the moment only to regret it during or after. It is for these reasons that INFJs are one of the least likely types to be found in situations or scenarios that involve intense stimulus just for the sake of stimulus, such as theme parks, parties, or sporting events. Such places don't allow the INFJ nearly any time at all to engage in their natural mode of processing information, and thus are stressful. Because the INFJ is a FE type, they are more likely than the INTJ to be found in an environment such as these though, because oftentimes such environments and events are complementary to developing and maintaining strong interpersonal relationships thus satisfying extroverted feeling. So now that we know about how INFJs work, what are they like? INFJs tend to be highly reserved, but not timid. Introverted intuition usually grants a decent level of confidence about what will happen in various situations, which allows the INFJ to navigate socially without fear, although maybe normal levels of anxiety. They usually spend a lot of time either by themselves or cultivating very few important close relationships. It is not uncommon for the mature INFJ to act as a guide to others in terms of life advice. INFJs tend to be very insightful into the desires and wills of others and are not likely to fall for manipulation tactics. They also tend to be the type to act on issues or moral injustices, but in a way that is not aggressive and is likely to lead to an outcome that is fair and just to all parties included, if possible. When it comes to personal opinions on the INFJs, I will say that I think they are a very interesting type, but that it is important that you don't look at them as such just because of their rarity. The INFJ isn't the type of person that would flaunt their rarity, but instead would be curious as to what the reasoning for being different was. INFJs are the types of people who notice the degrees of freedom between themselves and the rest of the world. Young INFJs are likely to spend a lot of their youth struggling with these differences, contemplating what sets them apart from their peers. It isn't until they grow into maturity that they usually see the potential for what their thoughts and feelings can bring to the world. Once they realize that potential though, there usually isn't much that can stop them from achieving their goals. All right, everybody, thank you for making it to the end of my INFJ video. If you would like to see more videos like this, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. 
Liking and sharing this video would also be largely appreciated. This has been Asura from Asura Psych. Have a good one.